All right, so I think we are live for the healing from sexual abuse. Google Hangout. Woo! It's Friday night, and you have me here. I'm Tama from the Womb Sauna, and we have Taliba from Divine Wombs of Life. Shout them out, sister. Peace, everyone. Welcome. We are super excited because we are passionate about making sure that every single person who wants to make a shift through whatever resources Taliba and I have, we're going to provide it. And so tonight was just another opportunity for us to connect with you, get you excited about transformation. So many people are impacted by sexual traumas. And so we're going to have a conversation tonight. And I know many of you are tuning in. Now, here's the disclaimer. This is our first time collaborating to do this kind of Google Hangout. So if we have any technical issues, please be patient. We have the chat box open right now, so you're more than welcome to use that as a way of communicating with us. I believe that as you join and connect with your webcam, we're able to see you that way as well. Well, but like I said, this is our first time venturing into the world of Google Hangouts. Um, and so, again, if you have any issues, please try to reach out to us, and we will make sure we will troubleshoot it the best that we can. So to make the best use of our time, we're going to jump right in. If you see me looking down, it's only because I'm looking at my notes because I love to talk, and I don't want to <laughs> ramble tonight. And so I wanted to start with giving you the backdrop for why we're even having this conversation. Our two companies, The Womb Sauna and Divine Wombs for Life, have teamed up to offer a powerful healing retreat for women that's coming up the first weekend of May. And so to lay the foundation for that retreat, we wanted to create these Google Hangouts as an outlet to be able to prepare you because from the moment you hit that door, Things are never going to be the same in your life. And both of our companies have that reputation in the communities of connecting with women and helping them make these powerful life shifts. And so we said, what better way than to lock the women down for three days in a very luxurious, beautiful establishment here in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and be able to really combine our services create a sacred environment for women to ritual together and really get to the roots of whatever is not working in your life. And so everybody write this down or open up a separate browser window so that you can connect to the retreat upcoming. It is a bit.ly link. So you don't have to type in www. or http. Just literally go to your URL and type in b i t dot l y forward slash heal your womb. Okay, again, b i t dot l y forward slash heal your womb. When you click on that link, it'll give you all of the information, it'll show you the itinerary. Not only are we going to have the womb sauna vaginal steaming, but Taliba's going to be ushering us into womb pulsing. We had the audacity to combine the two. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we even brought in some catered live food. And like I said, the venue where we're having this is owned by an amazing woman and entrepreneur here in PG County, Maryland. She actually received recognition for establishing the first luxury bed and breakfast in, in the county. When I tell you the high ceilings, the lushness, just even the environment is going to make you want to step your game up and get to the next level. And so it's going to be an amazing weekend. Again, bit.ly forward slash heal your womb. We should have added by any means necessary, <laughs> but I love it. So those of you who want to connect, that is why we're doing these hangouts, to lay the foundation for this upcoming retreat. So this is the first of a series, all right? And so we're helping you identify different areas that many women 
are still needing to release and make some shifts in. And so we're starting with sexual abuse. So let me lay this housekeeping. This is a conversation. Now, I know I'm new to Google Hangouts, so I don't really know the functionality of it, but it looks like there are a lot of great tools for you to engage. So if you hear something that you like, go ahead and say Ashe. You know, if you like to say Amen or however you shout it out, engage, because we don't want to just lecture you. We really want to hear from you. We really want to connect and know what's on your heart. If you're not able to do it during a live broadcast, definitely come back to our Hangout page where the event is listed. You can post comments and feedback to let us know how you're feeling about this information. All right? So with all of that said, for those of you who may not know who I am, let me introduce myself, and then Tali who will introduce herself. I am Reverend High Priestess Tamar Aziz Serwa. I am also known by many as Melinda Yule. I go by both names depending on what audience I'm in front of and who knows me as what. And so both names are valid for me. I am the founder and pioneer of the womb sauna, and I started this company because I needed to heal my own womb. And so in that process, I discovered through the holistic approach that it wasn't so much even just about my body. I needed to heal my life. There were some things that were absolutely out of order, and I needed to get it in check. In terms of my background, I've always been passionate about helping and empowering people. My education includes a BS in counseling, I have a BA in English, I have a master's in business, and I have an honorary doctorate of divinity. I'm a smart sister, and so you know, I have all this education, all of this, but none of that matters at the end of the day if I could not wake up every single day and be a witness to women and hold space for them and watch them do their healing work. And so I love it. I'm a servant, and I love being able to do this work. And so, Taliba, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Great. I am, I am Taliba Ndidi. I am just like so overjoyed to be able to share the work that I do. Um, I am the owner of Divine Wombs and Earth Herbs. I'm like one woman running two shows over here. <laughs> but I have dedicated my life to um, helping women, young, young women and women and people of all life um, on this planet, walks of life on this planet and helping them understand how their body functions. I think if we understand how that body, how the body functions, then we can do what we came here to do. So I am, you know, heading both those, spearheading both knees. I do custom herbal blends. I also have a line of herbal products to help um, detoxify and nourish every organ in the body. And my specialty is the female reproductive area where I am constantly helping women overcome whatever disorders they have with the um, help of herbs as well as my spiritual consultations and wound pulsing. Um, that is one of the hottest little techniques I got going on right now, but it's very powerful. So um, I am a certified um, a sacred sexual facilitator and I have a certificate in herbology from the Institute of Chinese Herbo 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 Herbology. Sorry. So um, I do have um, you know, extensive background in sacred healing um, from Native American culture and African spiritual culture. I do lead ceremonies. I've been doing this for over 25 years. So I don't really like to list all the things that I'm involved in because it would take five days for me to complete it. <laughs> I am just global and I'm uh, connected with everyone on this planet who's really open-hearted and willing to do what they came here to do. So I connect with people that are vibrating and on that frequency to help whoever I can when I can. So I am so happy that you guys could join us. So let's have a great, great time. Yes, yes. So for those of you who need to learn a little bit more, the website for the Womb Sauna is thewombsauna.com. And all the information is there. And Tali, will you want to give your website as well? Yes, it's divinewombsforlife.com. Mm -hmm. And that's Everything. with an S, right? Divine Wombs. Divine Wombs for Life. And that's D I V I W O M B S F O R L I F E dot com. Perfect. All right, power people, we got some important stuff 
to drop for y'all on this Friday evening. So I'm going to dive right in. If you see me looking down again, I'm looking at my notes. But let's start the conversation with this. What is a sexual trauma? Because truth be told, you know, depending on what side of the world you're on, what background you come from, what may be considered traumatic for one person may not be traumatic for the other. So just to frame our conversation, I want us to all come into harmony about the definition and some of the impacts of what's going on. Because like I said earlier, in the United States alone, one in six women in particular will be impacted by some form of sexual trauma. That's not a statistic we should be proud of. That means we got some work to do. Hmm. So my definition of a trauma in general is an experience that shows up in your life to deny the truth of who you are. A trauma is an experience that shows up in your life to deny the truth of who you really are. So a sexual trauma in my mind means that it's something that we experience that calls forward what I like to call the impersonator of -hmm. your divine sexual self, your body, your innate sense of sensuality. It's not the real you, but it's the imitator of the real you that you were born to be. Right. And there's all kinds of things that interrupt that development. And so some of the obvious things that we know culturally, of course, are rape, molestation, you know, but some of the hidden things are women who haven't had an orgasm in 10 years. And I say, God bless you. You need some help, honey. <laughs> That's a problem, that, you know. And we laugh about it, but seriously, that is a, a major blockage, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. And so that's why we have to have this conversation. So sexual traumas literally will take you outside of yourself with or without your permission at any stage of life in a variety of ways. All right. And like I said earlier, in different cultures and different periods of history, even sexual traumas change. So it's something to be said about the fact that there is a diversity to the the conversation about what a sexual trauma is. What that tells me is you assign the meaning to all of your experiences. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So I don't want to get too hung up on a definition. I want us to really focus in on that impersonator. The one who comes into existence, the mask that we wear as women, or even men, because sometimes we exclude the brothers from this conversation, but there's a lot of men who've experienced sexual traumas as well. And this impersonator gets created, and that person is keeping you from having mind-blowing pleasure, is keeping you from being comfortable with your sexuality and your womb's choice, whether your womb's choice is to be with one person or 40, but you can't even have peace and be confident in how you choose to move through life because of this impersonator. And it shows up in you not being okay with your body, running from the mirror, not liking you know what you see, thinking something's wrong with you. Um, when I was younger, this showed up for me a lot when it was time for my annual appointments with my OBGYN, and I always used to think something was wrong with me. And finally, one of them said, listen, I'm going to need you to study your body and know what things look like, smell like, feel like, so that you ain't in my office (laughs) all the time talking about, look at that. I think something's wrong with me. (laughs) And that's part of the reason that I, you know, I sell these home cervical self-exam kits for women and nobody, people are scared of. And I'm like, are you serious? You need to look at your stuff. You need to know how things work. So anyway, that's a, that's a whole other hangout. Let me stay focused. This is why I write notes. But literally this impersonator, and this is a big area right now, will also keep you from having the relationships you want to have. That unconditional love. You keep trying to wonder why am I year after year attracting Boo Boo the Fool Hmm. Well, there's something inside of you that's calling for that experience that needs to be addressed. And everything that you experience, no matter what it looks like, can serve you well. So this impersonator, I'm going to call the impersonator out. There's eight key ways that this energy shows up in your psyche, in your consciousness, to wreak havoc in your life. Number one, control issues. 
You just can't let things flow fluidly. Overly masculine in your energy. You always got to direct everything from your man to your boss to everything, right? Yeah. Well, when you get a sense of I'm not safe in the world, when your sexual development and your identity and being able to feel safe and comfortable in your body gets interrupted by something unhealthy, then yes, you seek your power. So because you begin to feel powerless, now you want to control everything. How somebody talks, how somebody dresses, how things look. That spirit of perfectionism. Because somewhere in your development, you feel like you lost your power. Second key area, issues with trust. Ooh, Lord have mercy. People don't like that word, trust. <laughs> issues with trust. Do you know that you're okay? Do you know that other people are okay? Just because you may have encountered a few bad apples, that doesn't mean a whole bunch of apples is spoiled, right? But when you have this interruption, again, when you have this impersonator that gets summoned by these traumas that happen, you have issues with trust. Third area, difficulty processing your feelings. I can't tell you how many women show up numb, can't even tell me what they're feeling, can't even tell me what's on their mind, can't even tell me how they process the anger, the sadness, the frustrations, because they have numbed themselves to survive. But it is not spirit's will for you to just simply survive. You are supposed to be living a pleasureful, abundant, amazing life. But you can't do that while you're numb. And yes, that may mean that you have to feel your pain and your anger, but when you have the right tools, you can do that and process these things in a healthy way. Fourth key area, and this is a big one, especially for women of color, being overly responsible, <laughs> bearing the weight of the world on your shoulders. I know Taliba understands. I know you get a few in your office too, honey, that are doing the most all the time. <laughs> yep, yep. We have, we wear them hats. too much. Yeah, pouring out of an empty cup. You cannot give what you don't have. But sometimes when you experience these interruptions in your development, you begin to think because of these insecurities, these trust issues, this controlling stuff, you begin to think you have something to prove. Whether it's to yourself, to your family, to the world, you think that by being overly responsible, by setting all these rules up, that that's somehow going to make you more safe and more productive and more worthy of being blessed and loved. And it's an illusion. You were born to be blessed and loved. And so you don't have to take on so much. There are literally amazing women of color dropping off this planet because they are too overly responsible. Hmm. It's a serious thing. Whether it's through suicide, you know, I just saw this week that, um, may she rest in peace, the sister from Brownstone, she, she left, I'm just looking literally at these young, amazing women leave this planet, and it's a broadcasting message that you are doing too much. You got to learn another way. So that's a key point. Number five, self-neglect. The impersonator will make you put yourself last on the list, and that ties in number four. Number six, the all or none thinking and behaving. Everything's got to be black or white, as if there are no shades of gray. And this creates boxes, and this tends to show up in your life with your spirituality. It shows up with your relationships. And you put yourself in this box thinking that the box is safe when the safety is outside and the vastness of things, you know, but you got yourself all locked up and chained up and you're wondering why you can't climax, you're wondering why you can't trust people and have women. One of the big things is, oh, I don't get along with women. Well, you are a woman. If you can't get along with women and there's something going on that you can't get along with yourself because you are your sister. Mm -hmm. Right. And so these things show up, this all or none thinking and all of these conditions for how life should be and how love should be. Seven, high tolerance for inappropriate behaviors. I wish a brother would try to howl at me like a dog while I'm walking down the street. Hmm. <laughs> 
But honestly, women who've had, you know, sexual traumas and they've been interrupted in their development, their natural development, they tend to have a very low bar. Some of them, not all of them. And then some of them have a bar that's too high. You know, you get into these extremes, yeah. right? <laughs> and then a high tolerance from, for inappropriate behaviors develops. And the last point, which I think is huge because I see it so often, low self-esteem. Yeah. And that comes from not knowing who you are. And when you don't know who you are, you don't know who to be proud of. You don't know who to cheer on. You don't know who to walk in. And you don't know the fullness of your power. But I don't care who touched you. I don't care who raped you. I don't care what happened to you. I know that it can serve you well when you really look at your life and who you are outside of that experience. So that's the impersonator. So I'm going to give you a secret to healing these sexual traumas. Now when I give you the secret, you can't then just hop off the hangout. You got to stay. <laughs> pink, pink, <laughs> pinky swear through the screen. That's my pinky right there. You can't just leave when I give you this secret, okay? So the secret is when you cannot see, as in perceive, the trauma anymore, it is no longer real. The impersonator dies. You have to feed this. Because think about it, a lot of these traumas, I know for me personally, my traumas happened in my childhood. I didn't even remember them until 2009. I processed them through amnesia. Once I remembered them, in order to feel what I needed to feel, I had to feed that stuff. I had to tell this story of being victimized over and over and over and over again to really feel victimized. And the initial reaction to it is one thing, but once you get beyond the initial reaction, you got to be ready for the process of releasing it and letting it go. And one of the easiest things to do is to start defining a new story, changing the story. I know it sounds oversimplified, but why does it have to be overcomplicated? Why does everything have to be so hard, right? Sometimes it is as simple as saying, you know what, this happened to me. But I can use this to my advantage. I can use this to reframe my identity and redefine myself. That's the secret. If you can't see trauma anymore, then that impersonating spirit, that energy that most likely is not even yours, that you absorbed from whoever afflicted you, you won't even be able to feel that or see that anymore because you'll say, I'm bigger than that. Beyond that experience, that is not who I am. I'm bigger than that. Right? So, mm -hmm. the real you, the God and goddess that you are outside of your human experiences existed before your sexual traumas, during it, and is still present even in the midst of your pain and anger. Mm -hmm. If it was not for the God in you, some of you wouldn't even be alive right now. Some of you would be in a straight jacket. I could be one of them that could end up in a straight jacket if it was not for my higher self and the power that was placed within me to think bigger, to change my story, and to not create a box that says just because somebody took this from me without my permission, that makes me this, that makes me angry. And sometimes our egos will use our experiences of what we call victimization as an excuse to act up to not be held accountable, to not do the work, to not move forward, to not be as powerful as we know we are, because it's work. And sometimes we don't always feel like it, mm -hmm. right? But truth be told, you are not that experience. You are bigger than that. And there is something inside of you that you can call on even now. And that's why we're doing this hangout. I'm hoping you're calling on it right now as I'm talking. <laughs> you can call on right now to help you See the broader picture. As quiet as it's kept, when you were in your mother's womb, you already knew what you needed to experience in this life to fulfill your destiny. And so no matter what happens to you, no matter what has happened to you, you got it. 
You got it. So with that being said, that takes me into the next part of this conversation, and I'm going to hand it over to Tali because she got some juicy stuff for us to do. When it comes to rebirthing your consciousness, changing your mindset around how you are identifying yourself based on what you've experienced in your sexuality, the first thing you got to do is decide, especially if you still have pain, anger, frustration, all of that, you have to make a conscious, deliberate decision to shift. The first step to change is awareness. So now that you may say, you know what, I, I was falling into that victim paradigm and way of thinking, and I was, you know, feeling really bad for myself, and every time somebody wanted to know about me, I always had to bring that up. That was my default, right? Once you shift from that, now you can say, okay, this is an opportunity. I'm at a crossroad, and I can decide that I got a new story I need to tell, even if I got to make it up. <laughs> I need to create a new story for myself because this victim stuff is not working for me. Not another day of my life. Yes, mm -hmm. I can recall the facts. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that that was part of my history, but that does not make me who I am today. And I know that even if I don't feel powerful yet, I am powerful. I am able to be healed whole and complete from this experience. And it's going to take some work. Sometimes it may take sitting on somebody's couch for a year or two and really talking through these things because maybe your parents and your family didn't give you the tools to know how to communicate and peel back those layers. But mm. The process is not as important as your decision to make a shift. And so that's where it starts. Make a shift. Decide that it's time for a change. Number two, get in the presence of women who are doing the healing work for themselves and are ready to hold space for you to do yours. This may sound like a sales pitch, <laughs> but you need to get to this retreat. <laughs> B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Heal your womb. Listen, in the ancient world, before patriarchy was established, the world understood the power of women coming together, dancing, singing, bringing their herbs together, ritualing together, coming together under the full moons and the new moons. This stuff. I know a lot of people proper, they create propaganda around it, but this is our ancestors' way, and it is powerful. And when women get together with the same intentions to do this healing work, it shakes this planet. And if we had women doing this all over the earth, could you just imagine we'd be in a completely different society? And so it may sound like a pitch, but it's real. You need to get in the presence of women who are doing this evolutionary healing work. And if you are in this age of awakening, then yes, you're a part of that. And the only way you can help your communities, your families, and this planet get better is by doing your work and getting in the presence of other women who are doing it. It creates a vortex. It's powerful, powerful energy. You got to give that to yourself. And then lastly, you got to become familiar with the gifts of the earth. You know, Taliba talked about how she has herbs for every organ of the body. Um, we have products. There's so many tools out here. Water. So how about sunlight? Get from in front of your computer. Not right now because I know we're in front of it now. But, <laughs> but you know, get, it, get from in front of your computer after you get off the hangout and go get some moonlight and some sunlight and really take in nature. Take in nature and let it minister to you. Let the sound of birds chirping and all of these different things really minister to you. Put in your body these healing tools. The blueprint for the earth, matter of fact, the blueprint for the entire universe is in your womb. You the go. ancestors are in your ovaries. You the stars <laughs> are in your ovaries. Exactly. You have that blueprint in you. And so when you begin to connect to it, when you begin to eat foods that are from the earth, not from labs, but from the earth, when you be begin to connect with the sun and all of that, it's deeply rejuvenating and healing. And it will literally reprogram 
the memories that are being held in your cells and in your womb and in your body and it'll start cleansing all of that energy out. So those are the three things you need to do right away. Number one, you got to make a decision to shift and I'm hoping that all of you tuning in are throwing your hands up with me and saying, that's me, I'm ready, tonight's my night. I didn't even know it was Transformation Friday, but I signed up, so I'm here and that must mean it's time for a shift. Yes, it is. It is time for a shift. And then connect with other women. Connect. you got to do that. Get in that healing space and then become familiar with the gifts of the earth. All right. So you've taken in some information. We've got the conversation started. I'm going to pass the mic so that Aliba can take us to the next phase of this, which is kind of reclaiming our power. She's going to walk us through some things. Yes, sister. We have definitely have to reclaim our power. Um, and it, it is no secret that with women making the change in their lives that it's going to shift the change in the, on the planet and in the universe because we're all interconnected and connected to that one source which is the cosmic mother and yes everything is held with inside our womb because the womb is the center of our life you know that is the direct connection that we have with the unseen world whatever spirit realm you want to call it we are connected to that source and the womb is what receives and holds all these imprints, all these memories. So whenever we have trauma, we go through a transformation to where a part of our spirit literally leaves our body. And it's about us claiming and reclaiming that energy back to us, standing in our power, understanding that a part of us was you know, slightly taken away and now we have to reclaim that power. So I want to share with you just a little powerful um, meditation, breathing meditation to get us to um, balance and reclaim our power because we, we, we all have been traumatized <laughs> on multiple levels. I mean, it doesn't have to just be a sexual um, trauma. Um, it could be any type of trauma because it's, it's, a, it's a shock to our nervous system for one. And it's embedded inside our cells. So we have to understand that it's up to us to make the change. Like Tamar said, we have to make that change so that we can transform and release those things that's embedded in our cells. So <clears throat> let's um, center ourselves. I want you to take your hands in an inverted pyramid, place it over your abdomen, your womb space, and um, take a deep breath. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. We're going to do that three times. So inhale. Exhale. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. One last time. Inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. And just repeat what I'm saying in your mind. I purify my mind. I purify my soul. I take back my power. I am not what happened to me. I nourish my emotions. I trust myself. I trust the power of the universe. I release my anger. I no longer function as a victim. I am a victor. I forgive myself to thinking that I was to blame. I forgive all who has abused me mentally or physically. I welcome the new me. I am pure. I am strong. I am powerful. I am fearless. I am centered. I am grounded. I am worthy. I am transformed. Ashe. Ashe. Let that go and vibe with you, sisters, because we have to make that change. And if it starts first with making that acknowledgement, you know, acknowledging that you are free, you are worthy, and you are transformed. So understand that. It's all energy. Everything that happened to us is just energy. And we have the 
choice of whether we want to hold on to that energy or we want to release that energy, learn what we need to learn from it because obviously it has it was attracted to us for a reason. Everything that happened to us happened to us for a reason. And it's up to us to live in that and understand what that reason may be. You know, I could tell you a, a nice trauma story that happened to me when I was six weeks old and had my parents not told me this, I wouldn't have known. I'm, my mother had me in the bassinet and she was in the kitchen preparing to feed me and a car ran straight into our house through the wall and that stopped right in front of my bassinet, like inches. People were like, I was the miracle baby. They don't know, they don't know why, how that car stopped. But the impact of that crash, and thank God I was crying, my eyes was closed, but the impact of the car and the debris, it all just shattered all over me and it shocked my spirit literally out of my body at six weeks. Imagine, six weeks. So I'm like, you know, growing up, I had, you know, because when, when you have trauma, it affects your kidneys. Because, that you know, fear is definitely linked to your kidneys. So it weakened my kidneys to where I had to have shots just so that my kidneys can, you know, reframe and get some life force. Um, but, you know, as I grew older, you know, I grew out of that. You know, I couldn't keep food on my stomach, so I had a I, my nerves was really, really bad. You know, real bad. To where I was smoking marijuana every day just to calm my nerves. That's how bad my nerves were, and I didn't know until I was in like my twenties that because of that accident, it shocked my spirit out of my body. I didn't know that I had to go back and do the work to reclaim my spirit and because I knew that I got to work <laughs> you know I really got to work I started doing you know rituals and ceremonies and whatnot and bringing my spirit back to me and it really helped me understood like well I, you know I knew I had a nervous condition I'm like well now that I know why I don't need to smoke marijuana so it's just learning these things to understand what you went through so trauma could be on any level you know, and also it made me very insecure. You know, I was very, you know, I didn't trust nobody. Like, because, you know, when you when, when a trauma like that happened, who do you trust? You know what I mean? Like, at six weeks, six weeks, you, you just, like, traumatized. Like, you're not going to trust too much of nothing. So if people would have, you know, come up behind me and go, like, boo, that, like, literally made me mad. And then, of course, I turned around with a reaction of hitting them. But you, you have to understand that trauma is embedded in our cells. So once I understood what happened to me, then I went to work. You know, I really had to settle myself down, to calm my nerves, and really reprogram my cells into understanding that I'm safe. I'm safe in my space. And once you understand that you are safe in your space, in your being, then you can go on to do the work. You don't have to be a victim. You know, and it played out. It played out in all my relationships. Like, I didn't trust no man that I was with at the time. Like, growing up, I didn't have no trust. <laughs> that was a trust issue for me because of that trauma. So we have to look at things on the broader, um, sp you know, span of how things traumatizes us and how we hold on to that. So we have to release those things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. I was sitting here being your amen corner because that was so profound. And I, I didn't know that you had that kind of trauma at six weeks. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And this, and that's just another example of why it's important to connect outside of yourself because sometimes when you hear somebody else's experience, you're able to say, wow, and look at how far my sister has come or look how far this brother has come. And I, if they can go through something, I can get there too. And that collective energy is very nourishing. I have to reinforce this point, and then I'm going to open it up so we can really dialogue about it because we got a, a few viewers, and I want to let them chime in and share their perspective too. Um, again, you cannot always control everything that shows up in your life it's just not designed that way mm -hmm. earth is the classroom this is where you come to learn <laughs> and master things so you are not going to be able to control everything that shows up in your life but you do assign the meaning 
and the impact. And so, you know, sometimes, especially here in the Western world, um, when this is why I stopped watching the news years ago. I didn't even know we had a snowstorm coming here to Maryland this week. I, I don't watch the news. <laughs> um, but I stopped watching it because there was so much glory attached to victimization. It was almost like the news reporters got off on being able to report deaths and violence and rapes in the alleys and I was like I'm not feasting off of this I can't eat this yeah I cannot eat this and it's the same thing so when you're you're in an environment and some of you can relate to this you come from a generation of women in your family that have that oh poor me vibration and you gotta break that stuff up you can recall the facts and you should you should have a support system in place when you do that process. I highly recommend a therapist. And there are holistic therapists. All you got to do is go on psychologytoday.com, type in holistic therapist, filter it by your insurance if you have it, and your zip code, and you'll find a plethora. When I saw a sister with a big afro and earrings, I said, she's for me. <laughs> she reminded me of myself. <laughs> So she got to talking about chakras and all that. I said, good, you know. But she's a qualified, trained therapist. You got to have an acupuncturist on your team. Somebody who can use those needles to break up Reiki. Get that unconditional love medicine in your body and that energy medicine. You know, of course, the womb sauna, divine wombs. I mean, there's so many resources. There's no reason why you should not be on the other side of it. Today is activation night. You know, that's probably why some of you are here. Some of you may be here just to cheer on and hold space because you've done the activation in yourself and you're on the other side of it. So let's just send love and light to those who may be in the thick of it. We have to make a shift. We have to. Our babies are depending on it. We're not able to have children like we used to anymore. Over 75 million Americans are diagnosed infertile men and women. It's a wake-up call being broadcasted about our sexuality, how we develop, how we identify, and how we hurt each other and heal each other. So we got a lot of work to do. So this has got to reinforce that, again, you are powerful. Yes, recall the facts, but don't get stuck on the facts. Go a step further and say, okay, this happened to me. And just to put that in context, to let you know that I am not insensitive to the experience I have been inappropriately touched by more people than I can count on both hands. From the time I was born, it was as if there was an alarm that went off and said, touch that one. And it got to a point where my mother said when it was time for me to go to kindergarten, I got to go to school with my child to protect her. So she got a job at my elementary school just to try to do her best to protect me. And even in that, I knew in my higher self that I needed to experience certain things to become who I am. And so, you know, I'm not insensitive to the fact that some of you have gone through horrible things that, that are just, they make you cringe just even thinking about it. But you are still here and you are here for a reason. Yeah. And there are things that you can be doing to get to the next level and to get to the other side of it. And so this retreat is an outlet to support those of you who need to do some additional work. Those of you who got to the other side, come and let's hold space for others who need to get to the other side. And Taliba, do you have anything else you want to chime in and add, my love, before we open it up for the people to chime in? No, just be your true authentic self because you are a miracle. Just the simple <laughs> fact that that sperm made it to that egg you living and you breathing, you're the miracle. <laughs> you yeah. are the miracle. Amen. I love that. Pass the offering plate. I love it. I love it. So I um like I said at the beginning of this, <laughs> the disclaimer was Whoa. I'm new, I'm new to Google Hangouts. Um and so I put the setting on muting your line when you joined. However, I see that we have quite a few people on the line. And um, if you click a button, you should be able to unmute yourself, I believe. Um. Okay. 
because I want to hear from the people. I want to hear what questions you have. Um, hmm. I'm going to figure this out. Give me a second, folks. Let's see. Let's see. The Q&A um, box. Okay, I see. Ooh, it's it's lit up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, see, so I was on the wrong screen, folks. Thank you for your patience. So, <laughs> yes, somebody was saying I missed the secret. I guess your children was was interfering with you. So the secret, I'm gonna give this to you again, and it's free, so it's real good. <laughs> the secret to healing from your sexual traumas is this. When you cannot see, as in perceive, the trauma anymore, it is no longer real. The impersonator dies. It has nothing to feed off of any longer. I don't think we really understand how powerful our minds, our consciousness really are. Um, I'm going to give you two examples really quickly, and then I'm going to move to the next question I see in the box. I was watching this new show that my husband found about these superhumans, some new show. I, I didn't even know this was out, but it's pretty cool. So they travel throughout the United States looking for these superhumans. There was a guy he found, I believe it was in New York, who was sticking these skewers, these metal skewers like this long. Can you see? Like this long literally threw his arm and felt absolutely no pain. It was gross to watch because I'm a little finicky about stuff like that. <laughs> but this guy was literally able to train his body to experience no pain. So they didn't believe it. It was like something must be wrong with the guy. So they took him to a doctor who specialized in studying the pain response in the body. Long story short, this guy was doing mindful meditation, and his meditations were so powerful that he literally trained his body to become numb to physical pain. They did the diagnostic test, showed the results on the show and everything, and I was in awe at the power of the mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, amazing. And so, yeah, somebody touched you. Yeah, somebody took from you, but you did not give them permission to take. But if you can reprogram your mind yeah. out of that victimhood, you will literally transform your womb. You yeah. will literally transform your body and how you identify yourself. You will literally begin to attract more abundance because you're clearing out all of that low vibration stuff mm -hmm. out of your mindset. And the second example because I, I am a movie buff. I'm not big on regular TV, except for the History Channel. But, you know, um, I don't know if y'all remember the Blade movie. I don't know if it was one, two, or three. But it was when the blind girl died, right? And the white girl in the movie, I can't remember the actress's name, but she was weeping. She was just, oh, she was losing it, right? And Blade, with his glasses, <laughs> turned to her. He said, use it. She began to sniffle a little bit. He said, use it. She stood up erect and use it. And I don't know why that part of the movie sticks out, but I think that it's a profound principle. Mm -hmm. Use it. Don't let it just be what happened to you. Let it become what happened for you. My decree that I speak over my life every single day, no matter how small the situation is or how dramatic it is, I always declare over my life that every single thing serves me well. Everything. The internet crash, whatever it could be, everything <laughs> serves me well. So I hope that answers your question, dear. That's the secret. You change your mindset about it. You stop calling it a trauma. You start redefining and reframing your story. It no longer becomes real. Now it becomes a tool. Now it becomes your servant. All right. Yeah. What's the other questions, Talib? I'm trying to see what else we have going on here. Um, I don't see any other more any more questions though. It's just more of everybody agreeing to the things that we're saying. Mm-hmm. I see that. I see that. 
Yes, yes. So any other questions, any comments? Was anybody able to unmute? I really don't know how to work this, y'all, so I apologize. The second go round on our next one, we'll figure out those details. But um, when I read the support guide, it said that we should be able to see the pictures of you, but I don't see anyone at the, the bottom. I see 11 viewers, but I can't see your faces. Um, but if you do have a question, you're more than welcome to use the chat box. You're more than welcome to use the Q&A and post some feedback or any questions that you have. And yes, I see that Omi is here. She said numbing is huge. Numbing is such an issue that robs us of our pleasure. And um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the arts of Tantra and ancient sexuality. And Taliba talked a little bit about her training in that area. But sis, can you chime in on how that emotional numbing affects women's ability to feel pleasure? Because there's a lot of data showing more and more women are not orgasm, orgasming. Is yeah. that a word? Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, can you chime in on that? Yes. It's, um, that whole numbness piece is really is to forget. I want to forget. I don't want, I don't want to remember. And we bury those cells, we bury those feelings, I'm sorry, deep in, in our cells and in our womb. And we, then we put layers and layers and layers of masks on top of them. And our biggest issue is that we don't want to feel. So we shut off all our emotions. And the key to really overcoming any type of trauma or abuse is to master your emotions. When you can master your emotions, then it's not going to affect you the way that it does. So when we learn how to take those masks off and really be our true, authentic self, like, I don't care, I'm naked, this is who I am, if I got one breast bigger than the other, if I don't have none at all, or whatever, what big spot on my head, that's who the Creator made me to be, and I'm loving me. So we have to love every aspect of who we are. And if we get into that, to that deep, deep, part of our womb where we're hiding all the hurt and all the pain, then we can release that numbness. See, we numb ourselves because we're that. We don't want to reenact what happened to us. And that is what womb pulsing is all about. It brings you back to whatever issues that's going on with you or did cause you to hide and cover up. It brings that up to the surface right away. So you can't hide no more. So it's about dealing with your pain. Feeling how you feel. We suppress the way we feel every day. We get uh, prescriptions every day for this, that, and the other. All a prescription does is numb you. Numb you so that you can't feel what's really going on. And pain is really a, um, a wake-up call. Pain is really your best friend. Pain is letting you know that something is not right about my body. And you have to bring your body back into alignment. But numbing... The numbness is really you hiding from being your true authentic self. And once you can open up and release that numbness, let me tell you, sisters, orgasms <laughs> is heaven. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, if you're not having orgasms, you're not living. And, you know, in some of the, the work that I do, I, I, I have in my writings, it's like if you are not changing the way that your cells are floating around in your body. You have to consciously and mentally make a statement on how you want your life to be because you create the life that you live every single day. So when you make that conscious decision and you're focusing on the things that you want, it's going to manifest. But if you don't fo focus on what you want, life is going to live you. Mm. And you're going to be wondering, what the hell have I got myself into? <laughs> Mm -hmm. You are in control of the way that your life needs to go. You have to, it's not about controlling your thoughts, it's about navigating, navigating how you want your life to be because, yes, we create the life we want and look how, you know, a lot of us create these happy lives that we live and, you know, all the trauma stuff that we go through, but imagine if you start focusing on, being, you know, creating that life that you really want to be and live out your purpose, it's going to manifest. It has no, no other choice but to manifest because that's the law of attraction. That's just how it works. So, un, you know, going deep and un, 
and unveiling whatever your shame, whatever your hurt, whatever your pain is. You got to bring it up to surface because that's the only way you're going to be able to release it, thank it for the lesson that it brought you, and let it go. Simple as that. I love that. I love what you shared about that. And I'm going to piggyback on it. And I just want to acknowledge, Ashley, I do see your question. So I'm going to answer that right after um, I make this point. And I understand that when somebody violates your body sexually, let's, let's go here about these sexual traumas, that that can affect how you experience pleasure. You know, I've worked with women where um, certain touches, and I was like this before I remembered all of my traumas, there were certain touches that my boyfriends and stuff would try to do with me, and it would send me into a state of panic. And at that time, I didn't even understand why. But my body did because the body holds the information. So there are tools, there are rituals and things you can be using to clear that energy out. If you're in a relationship with someone and you're trying to get to new heights sexually, there are uh, meditations. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm choosing my words carefully, but there are meditations and things you can do. When I first got with Z, one of the things we would do is we would undress and we would literally just hold each other and put the crown of our foreheads together and we would minister to each other and we would speak affirmations to each other and he was fully aware of the things I was trying to heal because I was transparent I unveiled and created a space for him to be able to participate in my healing mm -hmm. but even when I was single doing my healing work I would use things like yoni eggs I would use healing touch therapies. I would use baths. I would light candles and use Trey songs if I needed to, to reprogram my body to understand that all touch is not bad and to start releasing that energy that was not mine. You know, and breath work is huge. Yeah, I know Talib could probably chime in on that piece too. Breath work is huge in that regard to breathing things out, breathing in what you want to take in, breathing out what you don't. Yeah. Um, and uh, and doing breath work with your partners. I've, I've read, I can't remember the source now, but I tried it with my mate. When we were intimate, we would breathe and synchronize our breaths together. Mm -hmm. And literally he was able to send light where there was darkness mm -hmm. within me. And that allowed me to go to new heights. Every orgasm is a manifestation act. And so, you know, just like Taliba was saying, it's heaven. You literally are summoning and calling things forth. And so when there's blockages in that way, you do want to be doing some work. And a lot of healing touch therapies can support you in that. A lot of breath work and energy-based uh, therapies can help with that as well. And then I know, Ashley, your question. So for us to forget the hurt and know our worth, you are suggesting for us to view ourselves as perfect. I am suggesting that you view yourself as powerful and more powerful than the experience. Now perfection is relative. There's going to be some good days and honey there's going to be some bad days. <laughs> it's all good. It really is yeah. because that's life. You know, yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna always not snap on somebody. One day they might catch it. And sometimes people need that. My Baba told me there's people on the planet walking around with a footprint on their behind that matches your shoe size. And sometimes your job is to oh. plant your foot there and not worry how hard it hits. It's the human experience, right? There's gonna be days that you're gonna feel lighter than others. I am suggesting that you access your power that instead of identifying yourself by what you've been through, what you've experienced, that you begin to say, okay, if I take away that experience, then who am I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's when you begin to define yourself, because as quiet as it's kept, you get to choose. <laughs> you yes. get to choose okay. if you're going to be the victim or the goddess, if you're going to be broken or whole. And it's all originating from within. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds oversimplified, but again, I, I pose the question, who says everything has to be so hard? You know? Um, did we miss any other questions? No, but I would like to piggyback on what you said. Um, 
as far as for being in tune and knowing that, you know, some days is going to be not so good days and some days are going to be great days. But when you align yourself with the moon and really understand the moon energy and that there's an ebb and then there's a flow, then you're going to understand what life is all about because, you know, you hear it all the time, you know, men, especially men, they say we are complex beings. Yes, we as a, as a woman, we are complex, but we're, we're a high frequency complex of intelligence. That complex complexity is us being able to wear many hats, multiple hats. We are the birth, um, we're, we're the gateway of birthing a nation. Every human being came out of a womb. So yes, we are complicated. <laughs> it's a very complex system that we're running here, but it's more powerful than complex. So once you align yourself with the moon and understand the power of the first, the, the new moon, which is the first quarter, the um, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, which is the new moon, the, the first, I mean the full moon, and the last quarter of the moon, you can understand those energies and use them in your life because you can't start a major project or even a small project when it's a full moon. Like right now, it's a full moon. You can't start a healing regiment in a full moon. Like physically, the best time to start a project is in the new moon. Just like when we drop seeds in the in the earth, mm -hmm. the new moon. And then as the moon grows, then your project grow, and then you grow, and then the plants grow. So you have to understand that we are going to have cycles. We go through cycles every two hours in a day. <laughs> every two hours we change. We change with the moon. So when you understand that life is about changes then you have to change your mentality. You have to change that vic being that victim to being a victor. You're going to have to change. You can't stay in the same place. Stagnation will kill you. So it's about making a decision whether you're going to continue to be a victim or you're going to be the victor. But we want victory here. So we're, no, we're not victims. We're miracles. And once mm, you I like that, that and know that, then you can move on and align yourself with the moon because once you align yourself with the moon, then you will have that power that you need that's inside you. It just it automatically accesses the power in you to flow with nature. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. I love that. Be a wild woman. Yes. Be wild <laughs> and free. That's why I twerk every day. I am a wild woman. Yes. Wild and free. That's why I love you know, just sensuality. That's why when I see a woman denying herself her power, because there comes a point, and I'm going to say this um, because this is what my experience was, and, I, and I'm curious to see how many other people can resonate with it. There comes a certain point where you begin to consciously choose to remain stuck in the old stuff. There comes a point where you know because you're getting enough information, you're seeing TV commercials giving you signals, somebody in the grocery store drops something, you see a book on the shelf. I mean, you're getting all of these signals from spirit that, okay, you, you know, you're powerful, you can make a shift. And there are literally people who consciously choose to be stuck. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us, we're hearing, you know, some of you may be hearing these nuggets that we're sharing for the first time and it's activating something in you. Some of you, this is not the first time you're hearing this stuff. And you have to choose it. Nobody can take that pain away. Nobody can do the work for you. You have to really just decide, I'm going to be wild and free. If, if this process means some days I'm in the corner sucking my thumb, so be it. I am going to heal by any means necessary. I'm choosing it. Yeah. I'm decreeing it. I'm applying my faith to it. And I'm putting one foot in front of the next. And I'm yeah. walking it out one day at a time. Don't get obsessed about if next year you're still going to be here because you're not in next year. Don't get obsessed about, but this was the cycle for my life for the past three years. That's not relevant. No. The only part of this journey that is relevant is the present because that's the only piece that you can control. And that's where the power is. And right now, this now, very moment.
And so, you know, no, I, I don't know. I don't even know if I believe in perfection. I think it's also a perception because what may be perfect for one person may be ruined for another. But what I do know is power. Raw, unapologetic power. And when the first person touched me inappropriately, my mom tells me stories to this day on how I even as an infant knew my power and refused to let that hand out of the grips of my teeth until my mother came. And in my baby gibberish, I told her what was going on. <laughs> you know, so I do recognize power, even though it doesn't always look perfect. You know, when you look at ancient sacred texts, one of the um, one of the energies I resonate with tremendously is Shekhmet. You know, she got a rap for drawing blood and taking and devouring and, and murdering folks. Well, some people need their heads taken off. <laughs> you know, there's some things in this life we we have polarities for a reason. We have yin and yang for a reason. We have fire and water, and earth and air. You know, we have these polarities for a reason. So as you go through this process, for those of you tuning in, you don't have to be perfect. You don't even have to have all the answers. Honestly, you don't even have to have the full plan. Remember, that's that sinking back into being overly responsible. You don't need to, you don't need to be overly responsible. Our goal was to get you to make a solid decision to shift. And that will open up the way. And the resources and everything will begin to drop in your lap miraculously. Your ancestors are rooting for you. You got a whole entourage in the ethers who are ready to help you obtain your full manifestation of peace and forward movement. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just like, like Talibu was saying, be wild and free. You don't have to understand. I don't even understand half the stuff I feel most of the time. <laughs> But I don't need to. I just allow myself <laughs> to feel it. So I hope feel that. It. Feel it. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at. In the feelings. Just knowing, knowing that it's not even about, you know, being perfect. Because it, it all depends on what you define, define, define perfect as. But know that you're a miracle. And a miracle, um, that's as perfect as it's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> That's a miracle. I like that. I'm about to go get me a t-shirt that says, I am a miracle. <laughs> oh, we are. I mean, think about it. We really I love think about it. it. We are. And we here. We here in the now time. Nothing else matters but right now. We, we can't be accountable for something that's happened last week or a minute ago. We only can be accountable for right now. So be accountable for changing your frequency on this planet, changing the way that you think, changing and raising your vibration to know that you're worthy and that you are not a victim. Mm -hmm. You are not what happened to you at all. Mm -hmm. You're more than that. You're a miracle. I love that. I love that. So I think, oh, Ashley, I see you chime back in. Yes, you understand. Smooches love. I'm sending kisses and hugs through the ethos through, through Google Hangout to you. <laughs> So any other questions, ladies? Thank you for using this Q&A box because um, it allows us to see your feedback. I see Rashina is here. She said this is so powerful and how appropriate that is taking place around the full moon. See, we was just talking about that. Y'all sisters are in tune. I love it. Any other questions? Any other feedback? While you may be uh, typing anything, Again, we are doing these hangouts, and this is the first of a series, and we'll get better and better with each layer of this, to lay the foundation for the upcoming Transform Your Womb Retreat. I cannot say this enough, that from the moment you hit that door, know that you will leave that place not being the same. It's going to be so powerful. <laughs> We'll be transformed. <laughs> OMG. I'm telling you, just the vision that was dropped in our spirit about this event and bringing the womb sauna and the womb pulsing and the forgiveness rituals. 
So for those of you who, you know, know that you haven't really done the necessary forgiveness work to have peace and closure around some of your experiences, oh. that's part of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing sacred movements, move this energy out of our wounds and bodies, and it's going to be amazing. So you want to be there. Women have literally been signing up since December. So there are not a lot of spots left. <laughs> so you want to secure your spot so you can be there. So I'm going to give the link again for anyone who wants to be there. B-I-T. It's a bit.ly link. B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash heal your womb. By the next Hangout, I'll learn how to use the app where I could post the link in the Hangout, but I'm not at that level yet. <laughs> but I'll figure that out for our next one. And so I hope to join you. And if you can't make it, it's the first weekend of May. If you can't make it, send us your love and light because we're going to shake the DMV. It's going to be amazing what the sisters are going to come together and do for themselves and for each other. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. And then we're going to go back home. Then we're going to go back to our community, supercharged. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So I can't wait. Counting down. Any other questions or comments that came in? I think, I think that's it. All right, Power People. So we're going to go ahead and close out this Hangout. It is being recorded, so you should see, if you RSVP, the link on YouTube as well as on Google Hangouts. And I will repost it just to make sure everybody gets it. If you have any difficulty accessing it, you can email info at thewombsana.com, and I'll make sure that I connect you to this information. But it has been a joy having this conversation with you. It's such a beautiful conversation to have. Taliba, you know I love chatting with you anytime I get a chance to anyway. Yes. Um, so <laughs> thank you, my dear, for uh, coming on and sharing your wisdom and your energy. And to everyone who tuned in, I'm going to close this out with a prayer of intention for something powerful to happen. And we're going to end it. So to the most high, to our higher selves, to all that is already within us to allow us to be the best selves we can be, the best women we can be. We ask that whatever is keeping us from moving forward, that you bring it to the forefront of our minds so we can release it, we can shift it. I thank you that everybody who came here tonight is sharing that they are empowered and that they are motivated to move forward. And I thank you that anybody who may tune in later, even after this live event, and may have had to deal with a sexual trauma or something that interrupted their sexual development, that they be able to access pleasure and joy and peace and closure. And so I send that out. I send out the love. I send out the light. I call in the help of my ancestors, of the angels, of the Most High, to everybody assigned to our lives to help us with this transformative work. And I know that it is complete, signed, sealed, and delivered. So for that, I say Ashe. Okay. Amen. Okay. All right, Power People, it's been fun. Have a blessed night. Hydrate after this hangout and get some rest. Peace and blessings.